What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you are new today, what I'm gonna be doing is going over progression sliders, showing you guys what each of them does and also the set that I'm gonna be using for my franchise going forward. I went ahead and I have been doing some studying when I am doing my franchise and I have sort of come to an assumption of where the numbers I feel like should be for now. They may change in the future, but if at this point, this is what I feel like is a pretty good set to use. So if you would like to, make sure you stick around to the end and I will give you the set that I'm using. But first, we're gonna go into the settings and I'm gonna explain each one so that way if you are new to the game or maybe you're not familiar with what they do, you will understand what to expect if you start messing with them. So in order to access them, you're gonna go back to the options page here and you are just going to click on franchise settings, go down to XP sliders. This used to be a very basic task, but last year they added new ways to progress and have regression in your game, which is something that I really, really was happy for. So these are the standard ones. This is just your progression XP rate for all positions. But then you also have age progression, so you can set it per age. And then the same thing, but for regression, regression rate per position and then regression rate per age. So essentially, this is how much each position will earn. Now, if you go up or down, of course, more or less XP, if you deem that they need it, by the position only. Does not take in any factors of age, type of player, nothing like that. Age progression is exactly what it sounds like. This is where you can set different players to earn more XP the younger they are, and also take it away if you don't want them to earn it at a higher age. This is really good for balancing out leagues because a lot of the times with, if you leave this to the default settings and Madden just does what Madden does, they would essentially have a bunch of mid thirties guys that are still viable, still having X factors, still taking up starting spots and they're not regressing the way they should. And that can be a huge problem, especially for certain positions that are known for a lot of turnover. And that is where the regression rate can really come into play. You can set the rate of which running backs, tight ends, receivers will regress, which means that if you have this as a higher rating, that means that they will regress faster. So essentially, if you think a running back should maybe instead of regressing one overall at age 30, you sh they should regress two overalls, you're gonna wanna move this up a little bit so that way, your running backs throughout the league are regressing at a faster pace because that's sort of just what running backs do. And then you can also do the same here for age regression. You do not see anything before 26 years old because within the game files, this is the first age where a player can technically regress. You're highly unlikely to see a player regressing at age 26. It is possible, but it's not very likely. Usually you start seeing this more prevalent once they reach the age of 28 and so on. So by default, this game, of course, is gonna come at 100 for every single position, no matter what. All right, so here is my slider set. Now, this is a little bit different than the ones that you see around. I did take some inspiration because I've been using his slider set for a little bit now, and it's Funky Corn from Operation Sports. Uh, he does sliders like every year, it seems like. And I usually can rely on his. I was using Mr. Hurricanes for a while, so I would say that my sliders are a little bit of a mixture of both. And then some few adjustments that I decided to make because of the way I run the franchise that I that I play. So this might not be perfect for you, but just for those of you who have been asking about it, this is the set that I use. So my progression rate, I have quarterbacks turned down to 70. I've seen some as low as 10. Um, I, I don't wanna go that low. But I do want to try to control how many good quarterbacks there are. And while this might not seem like it makes sense in the beginning, down the line, quarterbacks sort of take over. And everybody has a 95 plus quarterback. Everybody has a, a good quarterback. Most teams even have a, a good backup quarterback that could start on most teams in the league today if it wasn't so inflated. So I'm trying to keep that down a little bit. Halfbacks I have at 120 because they usually get going right away. They get going early and then they don't have as long of a career and that will reflect later on when we get to the regression rates. Tight ends, a little bit less. They seem to get adequate points and I don't wanna to have too many guys that are you know high 80s, low 90s because you have to have turnover on teams and we just, down the line, you don't see much turnover with tight ends. Wide receivers, I have them just a little bit above normal because they do 
progress properly, but if you're trying to make well-rounded receivers and upgrade more than just one archetype, you're gonna want that little extra bit of progression. Fullbacks rarely upgrade. They, they just, they don't seem to upgrade very often, so I bumped them up to 130. Lyman, I have sort of staggered here because tackles still seem to earn more than guards and centers. So I have 106 for tackles, 108 for guards, and then 112 for centers to try and even things out there and to give you more ability to upgrade your linemen. On the defensive side, it's a lot of this is actually pretty close to, there's not a lot of craziness on this side, right? Defensive ends, 110. Defensive tackles, I have turned down just a little bit because a lot of these guys, man, you can get some really good ones out of the draft. And so you don't want too many where everybody's got a beast defensive tackle. You have to have those holes. You have to have guys that don't exactly catch up to being the top five tackle. Middle linebackers and outside linebackers both turned down to 90. Cornerbacks a 110, free safeties and strong safeties at 116. The reason I have cornerbacks up is because you have to upgrade not only man, but also zone. So you have to not only, you're, you're upgrading multiple at one time. So if you are evenly upgrading your corners, you know, man, zone, man, zone, or however you decide to play it out, you should be able to have more stability there. Even though I have it upright, it still should keep things a little bit better suited and not too over the top for your corners. Free safeties and strong safeties just don't seem to earn a lot of XP. They haven't for quite some time in Madden. So I have them bumped up to 116. Kickers and punters, I do have them bumped up to 126 because they just, they, they just really don't seem to upgrade. And when you do get an upgrade, it's like one, like one upgrade point, maybe two. It's, it's very minor of what they get. So for that reason, I bumped them up. Now to the progression rate for age. I grouped the first three years together from 20 to 22 as 120 because I feel like if a player is into the league that early on, that means that they have the most to learn. That right, they, they might have only played a year or two in college. You know, they, they came out early, whatever the case is, but they are gonna learn the most in that first year or two in the league. And that's why they should earn the most. And then I have another two grouped together at 23 and 24 at 110. And then we have just standard 100 for the next few years. And then we start the regression rate. And how I did this is I just took 10 away every year from 28 on. I do not want guys earning progression when they're above 33 years old. I just don't. I, I don't want to turn it all the way to zero, but I also feel like once you are in your 30s in the NFL, you are who you are. And for some positions that can go down to almost 28 years old. You, you are who you are. And that is also why I didn't want to drop quarterbacks too low, because if I drop them too low and the progression rate and the regression rate is up, it's it's not going it, to, it'll sort of balance itself out, right? Quarterbacks aren't going to gain the most, but they still can in their early years, at least when they're first getting into the league. And then it'll taper off down the line so that they're not, you know, all 34 year old 98 overall quarterbacks. We don't want that. And then the regression rate, I left quarterbacks at standard 100 because I did the two drastic ones up here for age and the positions. I don't wanna increase it too much because quarterbacks also play for a long time. Some quarterbacks, depending on you know what type of quarterback they are, they can play until they're 36, 37 years old. So I didn't wanna nerf them in regression. I did bump up halfbacks, tight ends and receivers a little bit and fullbacks because well, Almost everybody except offense, like quarterbacks on the offense, should regress faster than quarterbacks. So that's why I have a lot of them here at 110, fullbacks at 120, wide receivers, halfbacks at 130, and then tight ends also at 110. Same on the defensive side, because I did adjust things in the age area, I'm trying to use that as more of my area where it really takes effect. I didn't want to go too crazy up or down in the regression, but I did bump ends and tackles up. I left middle linebackers alone and outside linebackers. It seems for some reason that even though they're flying around the field, a lot of them can stay playing the game for a long time. Corners, safeties, of course, they are bumped up as well because, well, you know, they just, they're running around like crazy. Their knees start breaking down. They can't jump as high, that kind of a thing. Uh, kickers and punters, I left alone. And then as the age regression goes, I didn't want to start getting guys nerfed at 26, 27. Uh, but I did want to start at 28. So I did 28, 29 at 110, a couple at 120, 130, 140. And then as they get older, I just start really pushing the regression on them. So that way they get out of the league. The younger guys are coming in and taking over their spots. Now, I also have this in mind with 
progressive fatigue turned off. Some of them build them with it on. I did not want to do that. So I, I leave it off. I don't have the same stuff as some of the other guys do because I'm just not using the prog progressive fatigue. Everything else, this is not like tied to other settings of mine. This is just what I use no matter what I'm running. So if you guys wanna try it out, feel free. Let me know what you guys think down below. And hopefully if you guys are new to the progression area and you're not sure what it is, my quick explanation in the beginning may have taught you a little bit about it. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, appreciate if you could leave a like, subscribe if you have not already, turn on that bell notification, and I will see you guys next time.